All right, we're back, NDI November. Today, we've got our favorite guest, Glenn Seaman, a workflow specialist of Broadfield Distributing. He comes on our show, I'd say it's more than once a month now. How, huh, huh, Glenn? Just about every month and a half, roughly, but yeah. So, so Glenn's really been working with the folks at Netgear. We've, we've shown you some videos that he's done on setting up these Netgear 4250 switches, but today's show is really about NDI and these Netgear switches. And before we even get into this, I want to stress that through the years with NDI, a couple of things have happened. With NDI 5, NDI just works better. You know, plain and simple. The, the connectivity, the way it hooks together, the way everything goes is better in an NDI 5 world than it ever was. But with these switches, it really makes setting up and managing what you're doing a lot easier and a lot more straightforward. And what we found for our customers who run to, into issues with NDI, more than 75% of the time, it's network switch relate, network or switch related. And I have to say network broader because a lot of times, sometimes they don't realize they've got a cable run that's really old, crappy cable. Or they're going, that one week link in your network could break everything down. But if you get your cabling run right and you've got one of these Netgear 4250 family switches, you pretty much can have a bulletproof NDI solution. Wouldn't you agree with that, Glenn? No, definitely. Most, most of the issues, most of the calls we take, most of the problems we see are just people, you know, cheaping out on the network, not realizing how important it is. You know, it's PoE, it's, it's network setup, it's, it's, you know, how many other things are on that network, how many hops you're going through on your network. So a lot of it is network related and also just the settings. Going with an unmanaged switch causes all kinds of tissue issues too. So these Netgear switches aren't just managed, but they have a whole GUI interface to make managing them for NDI so much easier. So let's talk about just the switches in general, broad strokes. I got a little uh, PowerPoint to bring up here, but talk about how these switches from the ground up were engineered for an IP world of which NDI is our favorite form of, it, of IP. Yeah, so you know the first thing is, you know, we've said for a long time that you know, there needed to be a switch that was kind of embraced by the NDI community. And, you know, it's finally, you know, the NDI, you know, community, new tech, bird dog, PTZ optics, all these folks are getting behind these Netgear switches. And, and what they've done is, you know, first off, you know, any, you know, most managed switches, you can go in and you can set up things like QoS, IGMP snooping, um, you know, um, jumbo frames, you can control all of that. But a lot of times you have to get into you know a very complex GUI to do that in a in a managed switch. Sometimes you have to do it at a command line. Yeah. So we've got a video we'll roll in a little bit. But you know the, the thing about these switches is first off you know they built the profile, so they have these profiles that are in them that take care of all the settings for NDI, NDI four, NDI five, Dante. So they've got multiple profiles that are very easy to get to because they've created this AV GUI, which is a much more streamlined GUI designed for people that just need to go in and, and make these adjustments and do these things without having to dive into all the other details of a switch configuration, which also means they're not going to mess it up as much by clicking the wrong box. Yeah. Now, the, the, the line has, I think, 14 or 15 total switches in it, but we find that there are three that we really focus on. These are our go-to three switches for most people in the industry, setting up a small studio, small church, poor, small corporate video solution. They're basically, you know, eight one gig PoE ports, plus they give you two 1G ports and SFP, some have SFP plus. The 499 switch, if you're on a budget, it's a great switch, it's gonna do a fantastic job, but we've talked about this a lot, Glenn, and I really feel that if you can find the extra 300 bucks, that middle switch at 799 gives you a lot more expandability. It gives you the SFP plus so you can connect into bigger networks at higher data rates, and also it's going to give you 240 watts of total power, which the 125 on the 499 one, you cook in more than three or four cameras, you're going to get pretty close to you know, hitting a wall with that. But this is the real go-to one. And then the 999 one is for those people who really need a lot of power. And uh, talk to me a little bit about, the, about these three switches and how really they're the same with subtle differences. Yeah. So what we looked at is you, you kind of hit it. There's a total of you know, 12 network connections on all three of these switches. Eight of them are RJ45 POE connections, so copper connections that have power over Ethernet. 
Then there's two RJ45s, copper connectors that just do not have power. Those are all one gig connections. So you've got a total of eight, I'm sorry, 10 one gig copper connections. Then the switches each have two SFP or SFP plus ports. SFP basically is a small form factor um, pluggable device, device that you basically plug it and say, hey, I want to connect copper or I want to connect fiber. Uh, these can be used for uplinks. These can also be used to connect to your video production system. So if you've got a, a TriCaster and you want to use a 10 gig connection, you know, you can use those. So the, the difference really becomes with these switches is the entry level is SFP. SFP is just a one gig connection. You jump up to the middle one, that middle one gives you SFP plus, which is a 10 gig connection. And you've also got more power. So that's really why it's the sweet spot is because you know, you've got more than enough power for the cameras that you're going to grow into or the devices you're going to grow into. Once you get into NDI, once you get into PoE, you're always going to find another thing to add. So have plenty of power. The next thing becomes as you add those things, you may want that ability to jump up to a 10 gig connection and you've got it. So that's why that middle switch, like you said, if you can stretch that little extra, you're going to have something that's got plenty of power for you. Cool. And the who higher, are these switches The higher for? end one, just to wrap up that oh, one. Oh, sorry. That okay. one is the same as the middle one with just far more you know, PoE. So it's just got you know 720 watts of PoE plus plus. So for your higher end cameras that demand more power, that's the switch you go with. Perfect. Now, who are these switches for? Everyone asked for us. We have this little slide, but it's really for everyone. But you can use this switch for house of worship, sports production, education, corporate AV. Uh, have you found any place where these switches don't belong? Uh, no, I, I mean they, they are. Besides being you know a powerful AV switch, and you know they are they are very powerful. Netgear is a known name. They are a powerful regular network switch. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But you know there's no place that it hasn't gone. Yes, maybe somebody that's only got one camera. But in the case of one camera, you know a PoE injector and direct connections. There's lots of other ways of doing it. But these switches go everywhere. Right, so we had we do, we have these three little slides that we've done on another show, so I want to go through them kind of fast because we talked about it, but this is kind of giving you like a sample of the kind of gear. So if you're going to go with like a TriCaster or VMix or Wirecaster or Wirecast gear, running a switch, maybe you're setting up a studio with just, you know, two or three cameras and that's the whole load you're going to do, that 499 switch is more than enough. But if you're getting into something a little more complex where maybe you're going to be using some encoders or decoders, maybe you're going to be mixing SDI and HDMI stuff with like a TC1 and also you're going to be getting into heavier duty, more professional cameras like the Panasonic CX350 camera or maybe one of their UE100s, then you're going to want, or even the, the Bird Dog P200s, you know, you're going to want something a little bit more robust and that's where my favorite switch comes in, the one that's $799, the middle one. And then we show, you know, the higher end ones, really when you're pushing a system that I'm going to say, maybe you're doing like an event type structure where you really have a lot of big heavy duty cameras like those UE 150s and 145s from Panasonic. So I, I wanted to go through that briefly. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. Where I really want to pick up the time is this whole model that you came out, which was kind of, this is the real workflow part of the show, folks. This is where I, I basically got on the phone with Glenn. I said, what mistakes do people make even with these switches, which are so easy to configure and set up? And Glenn said, there's one common mistake people make. So take it away, Glenn. Yeah, if, if, I think we have a video, a short little video I want to roll first so people kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay. Is that cued or no? Yep. Yeah, Here comes the video. <laughs> That's why it's live, folks. I want to quickly jump into the AV web GUI to give folks some context. By default, the switch ships just like any other switch where all these ports are set up for handling data. I want to create an NDI profile. To do that, I come over to Network Profiles. I can then scroll down and find NDI 5 and click on the gear. I choose the ports. So I'm choosing five ports. I'm going to give this a profile name of NDI5. We will call it VLAN 10. And we're going to give it a color of blue. All I need to do is click Apply. And now I have created my NDI profile. Here's an important thing people need to realize. If I don't click Save right now, the next time I power cycle this switch, 
it will revert to the way it was before. This is a neat little feature because if I'm doing things and I completely mess myself up, I can always just power cycle the switch and I'll be back to the way I was when I started it. But if I'm happy with the way everything works, you have to remember to hit save. So what we've got now is we've got a switch with five NDI ports on one VLAN and the rest of the ports are on another VLAN for handling data. Now that we've set up an NDI profile, let's talk about what that really means. Cool. Now, Glenn, before we get into where this really means and the mistake, let's bring up that lower third because this is actually a subset of a much longer video that Glenn did that I want everyone to know that they can go to our YouTube page and see the full set of video that covers what we just spoke about and more walk you through stuff. But this part we're going to get into now really isn't the video. And this is more of an understanding of what having what, what you said is this is for one VLAN and another VLAN. So let's explain to folks what that means. Yeah, no. And, and that's why I wanted the video to roll is, you know, you said common mistakes. So the first one that I always like to point out is um, that remembering to hit save. The, yep. the funny thing about these switches is you can go in and you can do all these configuration changes. It all looks like it's working. It's great. If you power cycle it, it reverts. So not remembering to hit save is one of the things that hit a few people is they think it's working and then they go and they come back a couple of days later and they had a power failure and the switch is in some weird state. So yep. that's an important one. But the thing I really want to talk about is that um, hold on, I control these slides. So there we go. So, you know, the way the switch comes and the way most people are used to working with switches is they just plug everything into a switch. So, you know, this is a kind of a graphic of the switch here. We've got, you know, a couple cameras plugged into it, my TriCaster, I've got a laptop, and then I've got my router, which gets me to the internet. And, and everything works, and that's great. But, you know, what we really want to do is to optimize NDI, you really need to create, you know, these, these, you want to use a profile which sets up all your NDI settings the right way. So when you do that, you go into the switch. Oh. I've created a, a switch here where we've got a bunch of NDI ports and then we get our data ports and you can see all my NDI devices are connected together. My data devices are all connected together. But what happens is people do this and they suddenly realize, hey, that laptop can't see my cameras or, you know, I can't get to the internet. The reason is, is when you're dealing with VLANs and, and this is where people get confused. A lot of folks that are getting in these switches have never dealt with a VLAN before. A VLAN is basically turning this switch into two different switches. It's a virtual LAN. So it's like physically having two different switches. So there is a disconnect between the NDI network or the NDI LAN and the data LAN. So this causes some confusion for people because they just don't have never done this before, never dealt with this before. So what you typically need to do is in this case, that's great. I need my TriCaster to be able to see the NDI devices and the outside world. So I dual connect my TriCaster. I connect part of it to the NDI network, the other part to the data network. And now I can see both. The laptop still can't see the NDI devices because it's not on the network but you don't really want that because the whole point of this is one of the things you need to do and one of the things that we've seen and everybody that's doing a lot of ndic's is when you start getting ndi out in the wild on the rest of the network all kinds of other things can happen so again that's why you're isolating all that traffic cool now once again the video will have for next time one of the things i want to stress with what you showed me that a lot of people don't realize and if you go back to that i'm going to go back to that last slide is a lot of people don't realize their tricaster has two network ports on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually dual connect it to the switch on both sides of the switch. If my laptop was going to be using NDI scan converter or something to bring uh, a presentation in, then I need to get it onto the other side of the switch. And I get to pick where that side is. I could have it be nine ports could be NDI and one could be uh, uh, for the data. I set up where that is. I just have to remember that there's a data network and there's an NDI network within the same switch, which is one of the reasons why some people might want bigger switches, especially if they're trying to do an upgrade to their overall facility where they may want to replace their entire switch. We say, go for it, use one of these Netgear switches and just set up your VLAN where the NDI stuff is ran, home runs to the switch for the studio and the rest is out there. So we talked about this, Glenn, and these were like when I, I said, you know, what if I want bigger? You said, here are three great 24-port switches 
that you could set up that are still re extremely reasonably priced. I mean, at $1,399 with, you know, 480 watts of PoE and, and four SPF pluses, that middle switch, the, the 4230PX, is a great switch. But I'm also going to say the 4230 for most people who don't need that 10 gig interconnect because they're going to run their whole corporate office with it, that first switch could do the job. But once again, I tend to like the middle switches a little bit better. And then there's also switches that have less and more ports. So what's the maximum amount of ports they have in this family? Uh, it's around 40 ports. Cool. So, so and then you, you could do things where you cascade them. So, I mean, it's a full family, but you know, again, the neat thing is we just talked about it. You could take one of those, you know, 16 port, one of these switches, split it in half, have half of it be an NDI port, half of it manage your house network. You know, so that's where everybody else is running their computers off of. So, you know, these are not just for NDI. I mean, you're buying them because they have the best NDI infrastructure. And, you know, the thing I always like to stress is, you know, and is you've got a company, you know, Netgear, sorry, that has a support line for these. And you have support folks that understand NDI. So if you're having problems, you know, it's not like you're going to be calling up somebody that has no idea what NDI is or what you're trying to do. There is a support line that can take care of you with these switches. Yep. So if you're like a house of worship, we recommend getting one of the bigger switches. Use whatever amount of ports you need for for the, the, the cathedral, for the church where you're doing the actual, you know, where you're going to be worshiping. But then the other, let's say, 16 ports could be used to go to all the classrooms and the different tables and offices that are used for actually the back end of the house of worship. For schools, this is really great because let's say I wanted to put uh, NDI in the gym because I want to be able to do video from the gym, but I still have to do all the classrooms around the gym, the various ports. I could set this up in a closet next to the gym, have that NDI network running independently from all the other traffic that's going on, and now I don't have to worry that I'm going to have that NDI stuff getting out into the big, well, we like to call it out into the wild. Because yeah. a, a, if it was set up through a switch where everyone could see everyone, the part of NDI is everything can see everything and discover everything in NDI, which can create problems if you're managing, you know, a school district or something like that. So, so great that they have these bigger switches as well. I like to focus on the smaller ones just because we're really talking to a lot of people who, you know, are setting up their first independent, you know, network for video, IP video. But let's go into these next ones. You know, why should you upgrade your switch to, to Netgear? Because this is really talking to that church that already has a network, the school that has a network, or the corporation that has a network. And maybe you have, two, maybe in your company you have 224 port switches, maybe, and you want to put it in a video studio, maybe you pop one of those switches out and you put the Netgear in and now you, you create the, the NDI VLAN. What's beautiful about that is, is if you need more ports for the VLAN down the road, you could just open them up on the switch. It's not like you have to add another switch at that point. So what are our top three reasons why you might need to upgrade your switch to Netgear, Glenn? Take it away. Um, top three reasons really is that, that the reliability of a switch that is built around and understands NDI. Uh, number two, you know, it is a switch that the NDI community is getting behind. So, you know, if you pick up the phone and you're talking to somebody from any of the companies that you're trying to support, you know, they're not going to say, oh, we don't know that switch. We don't support that switch. Um, you know, number three, they're, they're a great price and and they are really reliable. They're very flexible. And really, it's that they're super easy to use. I mean, you can you don't need to be an IT whiz to go in and set these switches up. But I'm going to add a fourth. If you are an IT whiz, the folks at Netgear have incredible support. So you, no matter how yeah. crazy you get yourself into the weeds, these guys can get you out of it. And you know, the investment that Netgear has put beyond knowledge base, support, pre-support, post-support, partnering with people like Newtech, Wirecast, Bird Dog, uh, PTZ Optics, you name it, Panasonic, they have really built these profiles in. They're working with Dante and other people that made a commitment to AV over IP. And I'm telling you, Bar none, this is our number one tech support tip, pre-sale, post-sale, during things, get a switch that's made for NDI and IP, and your world's just going to be a lot better. And these Netgear switches are the bomb diggity. They really work great. <laughs> How to throw that in there. Want to go back and talk about the three models that we really love from Video Guys. Basically, it's, it's the 4250 line, the 10G2s. There's the F, which is the base model for $499. There's a 2XF, which is 
799 gets you up to two SFP plus ports, so you get 10 gig. You're also getting 240 watts. And there's the big kahuna for 799, which is for when you're really pushing, you know, a lot of, you need a lot more power instructions. Now, to show how the whole community is behind this, we want to talk about a bundle that the folks at Netgear, Wirecast, and Bird Dog just put together with us that we launched as a Black Friday bundle, but it's good through the whole end of the year. And that's our NDI production bundle. So what are you getting? You're getting three cameras from Bird Dog, two P100s and P200. You're getting the Bird Dog key, keyboard, the first NDI controller. You're getting the Wirecast Gear 420, their top of the line gearbox. And you're getting the Netgear 799 switch because that's the one I love. And they asked me which one to put in the box. And I said, it's definitely going to be worth to take the $300 more. The whole bundle is $1603. It's like you're getting that Netgear switch for free. It's such a phenomenal deal and we love it. And I just want to stress that we put this deal kind of together as a showcase deal. The truth of the matter is, is we are ready to help you configure a complete solution with cameras. It could be from Bird Dog, it could be from PTC Optics, it could be from Panasonic with switchers, it could be the TriCaster, it could be a Wirecast gear, it could be Wirecast software. With the different Netgear switches, we could pick a bigger switch if you need a bigger switch, different controllers. This is a great example of a great value. You know, here you are for 15,587. Basically, all you need to do is add monitors and cabling, and you have a complete NDI video production solution that could work in a church, in a school gymnasium for sporting events. You name it. Glenn, you helped us put this bundle together. Tell us your thoughts on it. No, I think it's great. I mean, you've got, I mean, the Wirecast gear is a phenomenal product. Bird Dog cameras, it's, it's all great products all put together. This is a turnkey house of worship, you know, live production, live switching and streaming dream. I mean, it's, you know, it's just a really well thought together kit. You've got a 20X, you know, you got this, the P100s for the close up cameras and then, you know, the, P200 to put in the back of the church or wherever yep. you're going to put it for, you know, because that's got the 30X the zoom. So just a right. nice combination of, of tools. Yeah, awesome. Glenn, thank you so much for being on the show. Once again, you killed it. We actually got in under 25 minutes, which is great because lately yeah. I've been going much too long. NDI November is the real deal. We really love it. If you could bring up that lower third so people can go to the Netgear uh, uh, video that Glenn put together. It's a little more in depth on how to set it up. And then I also want to say that, you know, these Netgear switches are a perfect example of what my motto was for this year. And that was, in 2020, we just made all this stuff work. In 2021, we make it work better, look better, and easier to do. And there's no better example of that than these Netgear switches. So, Glenn, thanks for being on the show. I believe now after the show, we're going to roll a little bit of a vendor uh, infomercial, so to speak, and, and then we'll uh, close the show. So, everyone, NDI November, we still got a couple of weeks left. Thank you, Glenn, for coming on. Thank you, Netgear, for giving us these products. This is Gary from Video Guys. Give us the love. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Twitter. Come to our webpage. Watch our blog. Do the Facebook thing. Do the YouTube thing. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Send it to your wife and kids. This is the greatest show in the world. We want more people to watch it. NDI November. This is Gary from Video Guys. Thank you, Glenn. Peace. Join us all this month for NDI November. Make sure to check out NDI Today and a look ahead to tomorrow with Dr. Andrew Cross. And NDI Workflows, best practices for connecting all the NDI production tools with NewTek. You just watched NDI Infrastructure Advice with Workflow Specialist Glenn Seaman. On November 23rd, we will be featuring NDI PTZ Camera Roundup. And on November 30th, we will be featuring the NDI November Wrap-Up. Register to win one of our great giveaways, including NDI Education with the New Tech University NDI and Performance Media Networking Class and Exam, NDI Converter, your choice of any bird dog flex, NDI Webcam, a Huddlecam HD IP Pro Webcam with NDI connectivity, NDI Software, a Telestream Wirecast Pro license for Mac or Windows, or the NDI Guidebook, the unofficial guide to NDI by Paul Richards. We'll